Right, R3 is also a 5K6. So I found the 5K6. Bend this. And that's R3. Let's make that quite tight. Find the place for R3. There it is. And solder it in. In you go. And clip the leads. I find this very therapeutic. Just quietly sitting here finding components. R4, 10K, brown, black, orange. So I think perhaps what I'll do is, that's brown, black, orange. Don't need to component test that. These are all three band resistors, not like those horrible four band things that were in the, uh, oh, some kit I did. Oh, the oscilloscope, that's right. The oscilloscope kit had those four bands, which turned into a bit of a nightmare because resistors of the same value, uh, of different value, had the same colors, can you believe? Ridiculous. 220 ohms, I think it was. Uh, yeah, so what I think I'm going to do next year is do more of these kit builds because I really enjoy them. Possibly not with all this single take business and me rabbiting on. I don't think that's necessary. Four resistors. Hopefully all the right values. Okay, R5, R4, R5, and R6 are all 10K. That's good. Is that a 10K? No, that's a 1K, brown, black, red. That's a 10K, brown, black, orange, so R5, 10K. Where are you, R5? And our six. Can't find our five. Oh, there it is. Goes the other way. Now, of course, I said it goes the other way. It's marked on the board as facing the other way. Um, of course, it doesn't matter with resistors. They are. They are. They're not uh, polarized. I don't think there are any resistors that are polarized. No, I don't think a resistor can be polarized. So resistors are always one way, uh, either way around. You can put them either way around. Not the case with capacitors. Some of those are polarized and some aren't. Typically the higher values are polarized. Things like electrolytics, tantalums, and the lower values, ceramics, and polyester and all that sort of stuff are not polarized. You can put them either way around. Uh, okay, so now R6 was also 10K. Where might that be? There it is. I'm looking forward to um, powering this thing up, even when I've only built one of them, because I'm looking forward to hearing the sort of white noise that it will produce uh, just as it receives nothing. Where is R6? There it is. Right, brown, black, orange, double check, R6, 10K, yeah. Yeah, static, just that sort of rushing sound. I think these are going to be amplitude modulated. I can't imagine these are FM. I think they'll be AM. which is where the carrier wave uh, varies in amplitude in response to the audio signal. So I suppose when there's no audio, the carrier wave is at sort of half amplitude. And then as the audio 
uh, sine wave sort of rises up, the carrier grows, and then as the uh, audio drops to its lowest value, below the, the below the middle of the, uh, well at the bottom of the sine wave, the carrier will be at its minimum. That would be my guess. Okay, R six, R seven. What have we got? Five hundred and sixty k. Green, blue, yellow. Five hundred and sixty k. Green, blue, yellow. Hmm. Can't see one. That's green, blue. I think. Oh, that might be green, blue, yellow. They really are so tiny. How close can I get? Is that green, blue, yellow? I think it is. Let me just look at that close up. Yep, green, blue, yellow. 560k. It was R7, wasn't it? R7, there we are. Is that going to stay in? Yep, I reckon. Bit of solder. It falls out a bit and sits high on the board. Doesn't really matter because that's typically how you get these things when they're built in factories. They don't worry too much about the component falling out a little bit, but that hasn't. That looks good. 560k. R7. R8. Here's a straight 1k. Grab that red. Here's a 1k. Grab that red. Send it that way. Was that R8? Was it? Yeah, R8, 1K. R8, where are you? There it is. R8, down the bottom there. Let's put that in. So I'm getting through the resistors bit by bit. I was looking on eBay the other day at some uh, electronic sets. I was trying to find the electronic sets that I had as a kid and uh, I seem to remember that one of them was Philips and there was a main kit and then there were two add-on kits uh, R9 is 10 ohms, same as R1. R9, 10 ohms. And the two add-on kits allowed you to build extra uh, gadgets and devices. Brown, black, black, 10 ohms. Yeah, that's pretty. Check that. Yeah. So I found that one, and then there was another one which was, I was pretty certain it was made by Triang, and I found something called the Trionic. Oh, nine. And I uh, also had that one. I'll put up pictures of them. Oh, I seem to put something in R9 already. No, that's R5. Here's R9. There we are. So that's 10 ohms. And then, of course, I also had, yeah, R9, 10 ohms. Uh, Maplin, no, not Maplin, probably Radio Shack, Tandy it was here, Tandy electronic sets. You know, you could build burger alarms and radio receivers, and I think some of the sets let you build a, let you build a radio transmitter. Well, of course, this walkie-talkie is a receiver and, no, a receiver or a transmitter. It kind of, the circuit gets rewired when you push the button. This button here. It's a sort of changeover switch and it changes over several connections. This print is absolutely awful. Why, is the, why have they printed in two colours and then put green behind the black? It doesn't make any sense. And of course the registration's off. So you've just got this sort of green shadow on the back. I'm a bit of a print nerd because I spent uh, 13 years in the print industry. That was my job as a field service engineer repairing 
typesetting machines, uh, which produced the films that then made the plates, which printed garbage like this. Uh, yeah, so this changeover switch turns this from a receiver to a transmitter. So it's a receiver when the uh, button is released and the transmitter when you push it in. Okay, what did I want next? An R10, was it? Is there an R10? That's odd. There's an R11. Why is there no R10? Uh, 10 minutes. Well, let's cut it there and try, I'll try and find R10.